The pay of doctors is an elusive game of smoke and mirrors. Nobody really wants to tell you how much doctors are paid. And although the information is publicly available online, it's really difficult to find. The highest paid GP in the UK reportedly earns over 600,000 pounds. And private consultants on Harley Street in London are supposedly earning over 1 million pounds a year. My name is Kieran, I'm a junior doctor and a comedian, and I have been working as a doctor for four years post-graduation. I'm currently training to be a GP and I earn just under £50,000 a year. Today we're looking at the highest earning doctors in the UK. Who are these guys and how much are they really earning? First, let's look at how doctors get paid in the UK. There are two main systems, the National Health Service and then the private sector. The National Health Service is funded by people's taxes and the private sector is funded by insurance companies and people paying privately to get things done quicker. If someone needs a knee replacement on the NHS, they might be waiting months and months and months for that to happen. Whereas in the private sector, it might happen in the next few weeks. As a consequence though, for the end user, you have to pay to receive that quicker service. Service. You might pay monthly or yearly for insurance and when it comes to the time that actually you need your knee surgery, the insurance will pay out and it'll be covered by them. Or you might not have insurance and actually you've gone to the NHS, you've seen that the waiting list is so long and you've decided it's worth your while just to pay the extra and to get it done quicker. This can end up being really expensive, I mean even scans can cost thousands of pounds but it's still better than America. Emergency treatment in the NHS is done really quickly. So generally, it doesn't matter how much you're willing to pay. If you have a burst appendix that needs surgery, that will get done straight away. If you have a hip fracture and you need a hip replacement, that will be done straight away. So that's one of the great things about the NHS. It's just the elective things that can actually wait to be done that can go to the private sector. Make sense? So the basic pay for doctors, I'm about to read this because I don't know these numbers and I'll link the document down below. An FY1, so a new doctor is on £28,800 a year. FY2 doctor, £33,000 a year. CT1 or ST1, £39,000 a year. And then it goes up and up until you're a senior registrar earning £53,000 a year basic salary. So my basic salary is quoted at £39,000 a year. But you might know if you've seen my other video, but that my actual salary is around £50,000 a year. So obviously there's a discrepancy there. The reason for that is because it's very misleading. Actually, there's other things that are added to pay that are part of rotors that you have no choice of that will increase this pay. So you get paid extra for doing night shifts, you get paid extra for doing weekends, you get paid extra for doing out of hour shifts. And this premium really adds up and equates to another 25% usually on top of your salary. This is one of the reasons why it's so difficult to work out how much doctors are being paid because the pay scales are just so variable. So if you check out this graph of FY1 pay scale, you'll actually see that an FY1 doctor could earn up to £44,000. If they're working the max, doing lots of out of hours, doing lots of weekends, they can theoretically earn that much. When you've finished your medical training and you've done five or six years as a registrar, you become a consultant. And consultants are the top doctors that are being paid the most. The basic salary for a new consultant on the 2003 contract is £82,000. So that's the starting salary and each year it goes up and up. But as we talked about before, there's loads of supplementary extras that you can have that will increase this pay. All of this information is freely available online. All you need to do is search for it or request it. And if someone has previously requested it, that information will be available. So someone recently asked what are the highest paid male and female doctors in the NHS in the UK and I actually found the answer to this question and I'll put the link down below again. The top three highest paid male doctors in the UK are on £511,000, £504,000 and £449,000. So the highest paid NHS male doctors are on half a million pounds a year which is a lot when you consider that the basic salary of a starting consultant is £83,000. The highest paid female consultants are on three hundred. £155,000 a year, £291,000 a year, and £288,000 a year. So the other thing to note there is that there's a massive discrepancy between the pay of male doctors 
and female doctors at this top end. Now it doesn't say what specialities they were in or what they did to earn this extra pay, but that is a crazy amount considering that was just NHS pay and wasn't the private sector at all. What about GPs? How much do they get paid? According to the BMA, GPs get paid between 60,000 and 91,000 pounds. But being a GP partner is actually more like running a business, so there's scope to earn way more. The Sun newspaper, I know not a very reliable source, but they requested some information from NHS Digital about the highest paid GPs, and they found that the highest paid GP in the UK was being paid over 600,000 pounds a year with over 18 GPs earning at least £30,000 a year, and almost 90% of GPs actually earning less than £100,000 a year. So although the top end are earning a lot, 90% of GPs were still earning less than £100,000 a year. What about private medical or surgical consultants? Now this is where the real big bucks comes in medicine, is private practice in secondary care. When you get paid per operation, for example, and you're a really well-known, oversubscribed surgeon, these prices can go up and up. Talking about subscribing, if you're new, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That was quite smooth. A report in The Observer listed some standard fees for surgical consultants. These were £2,170 for a heart bypass, £2,140 to remove a brain tumour, and £825 for a hip replacement. This report was over 20 years old, so you can only imagine that the price of these things has gone up today. The report also suggested that over 20 UK doctors were on, wait for it, over £1 million per year before tax. It's important to be realistic in that not all private hospital consultants are on these crazy figures, but it is insane to see what they're on at the top end. Who are the highest paid specialties? And which doctors actually are these earning those big bucks? Let me tell you. This research paper from the Journal of the Royal Society of Medicine listed the highest paid specialties in the UK. Bear in mind this is over 20 year old, but they looked at their tax returns to work out that number one was plastic surgery with a mean income of 217,000 pounds, trauma and orthopedic surgery with a mean income of 177,000 pounds, and neurosurgery with a mean income of 158,000 pounds per year. Be clear that that's mean income. So that's not just the top end, that's the average income for a consultant in the private sector in that specialty. And that's one of the reasons that plastic surgery orthopedic surgery and neurosurgery are so so popular. Following this was ENT, cardiology, ophthalmology and dermatology and I'll link the whole thing down below if you want to check out the full list. Bear in mind that again this report is old and some of these incomes will have changed now and I would have thought would have become a lot more. What does it actually take to become a hospital consultant and to earn the big bucks? Looking at it from the start, you need to go to medical school for five years, you need to do two years of foundation training, two years of core surgical training, followed by another six years of specialty training to become a consultant. And even at that point, you're not earning the big bucks. You've just become a consultant, you need to get more practice in the NHS before you can move to the private sector and build up your patient list. And even when you're in the private sector, you need to work for a number of years to build up your name to then get people coming out of their way to find you and to have their surgery done by you. So it's not something that happens overnight. It's not something that is very easy to happen to a person. And we also have to appreciate the work that goes into actually getting to that level. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. That was the highest paid doctors in the UK. As always, if you are new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos take care everyone and stay safe